What is up dogs, Ross here, and today we are going to be reviewing Zen Lesson Zero because I have finally completed the 1.0 story, so now I can do my full blown review on this new gacha game. And also today we have a special guest, that is right, Connor Dog is here, Sea Dog is here. Hello Connor! What's up? Hello man. How you doing, how you doing? I'm doing all right, man. Thank you for asking. How are you feeling today? Good, you excited for Zenless Zone Zero? Ah, uh, yeah, I was very, very excited to play Zenless Zone Zero. So, yeah, I was really looking forward to it. A new game in the gacha space. I was very much looking forward to it. And I'm excited just to talk about it because, you know, I have just finished 1.0 as well. But have you played Zenless Zone Zero yet? Like, uh, how much have you played of it? Yes, I played it a couple of months ago, actually. Uh, I think it was a beta or like early access or something. Uh, and it was... And I, and, I, and I mean this unironically, it was swag. Hey, well, that is one way to describe Zen and Zone Zero. Swag is a very good hot take indeed, but I'm going to do my review on it. So let's just jump into it. Now, a few of you may have questions to start off with, like, is it worth downloading? Is it fun? Well, with my review here, hopefully that will give you some of the answers you are looking for. So to start, Zen and Zone Zero is a new gacha game created by Hoyoverse, those who have made Honkai Impact 3rd, Genshin Impact, and Honkai Star Rail, just to name a few. So in the world of Zenless Zone Zeros, it is, and you probably might have guessed, a post-apocalyptic world. Now, there is a supernatural disaster currently happening in the world of Zenless Zone Zeros, which is referred to as Hollow. The Hollow is taking over the world right now. The only thing I can compare it to if you've ever played Final Fantasy XIV Lightning Returns, they've got a similar kind of mechanic where the world is getting engulfed by chaos and inside the chaos there's these evil creatures that live inside the chaos and start to make their way into the real world as well, which is kind of similar to what's happening in Sinless Zone Zero. But inside these dimensions there's these evil creatures called the Ethereals. And then that introduces us to the world that we lived in, which is New Eridu, which kind of lives off the resources that you can collect from the Hollows to make some crazy new technology, there's crazy new machines and all that that is getting built from what people salvage from the hollows. The game then introduces us to the main characters which we are referred to as proxies. And as a proxy we take control of these little mascot creatures called Bangboos that helps us traverse the hollows. And as we go through the game of Zenless Zone Zero we see these other factions as well. We are part of the Cunning Hares which consists of Ambi, Billy, Nikomara and Nicole. But we also have the Bellabog Heavy Industries, the Criminal Investigation Special Response Team, We've also got the Section 6 team as well, the Sons of Caledon, and last but certainly not least, we have the Victoria Housekeeping Faction. Now, our main base is inside a video store, which has a nice nostalgic feel about it because it takes me back to the good old days of VHS. If you don't know what a VHS is, well, Google it. YouTube it. I'm sure you'll find some information on VHSs. They were the DVDs of our time. They were the Blu-ray discs of our time. They were the streaming services of our time. Now one of the pros about this game is it is not open world because I do not have time for another open world game where I have to explore to get items. This one is all very enclosed little places. You've got your domains that you do. You've got your weeklies that you do. You don't need to do any exploration really. So that is a huge plus. Now with it being a gacha game, there is also a gacha system and it just is the same as every other Hoyoverse game. You've got your limited banner, you've got your standard banner and you've got your weapon banner but also there is the Bangboo banner as well and similar to most of them it is I think roughly about 90 pulls for hard pity and you can lose your 50-50 or win your 50-50. So they ain't breaking the gacha system it's the same one you're always used to, to all this time. Now I want to talk about the battle system. I did enjoy the battle system a lot. It was similar to Honkai Impact 3rd so from what I've been feeling so far, it's similar to Honkai Impact Third slash Wyvern Waves. It's got that fast pace. You've got to block at the right time if you want to, and you also have to dodge at the right time too. So there is some timing involved in this game, but I think you get a very, you know, you're quite satisfied once you can parry at the right time and once you can learn to block at the right time. I think it's very satisfying once you can pull off a good parry and a good dodge as well. Now, a lot of complaint I did see from the start was a lot of people said uh, the enemies are, don't really do anything. From what it feels like, uh, it felt like, yes, I agree, the start enemies don't really do much. I think at the start, they're all tutorial enemies and they don't really do too much. I've seen a lot of people just saying it's a button masher, you don't even need to look at the game when you're playing, but once you reach the end game content, which I am at, you do have to kind of start taking notices of when to parry, when to dodge at the right time, because it does get a bit stronger, but then again, I haven't got the greatest build yet, 
So maybe it might switch back to the other way once my builds are the way I want them to be. Now during the story as well, while you're doing your missions, you can choose normal mode or challenge mode. From what I've seen, well what I've done, it feels like challenge mode is just the same but the enemies just have more HP, they just become damage sponges and you don't get any extra like rewards when you do challenge mode. So personally there isn't really too much of a reason to do challenge mode. There is a hard mode that does unlock later on so you can redo the story but there's a hard mode version of it and you do get extra rewards from that. But when it comes to challenge mode there's just no real reason to do it. Now during the story it does split between just like kind of comic book style which I love by the way. I love the comic book styles on it. The only thing I wish they would do is while you're watching those cutscenes of the comic books, there was a way to hide the text boxes, so you would just get a nice clean screenshot of that comic book page. Unfortunately, they haven't done that yet. Maybe that is something they'll implement later on. And also, we've got the kind of cutscenes where it's just your characters are on screen that just face the camera and talk. If you've played Honkai Impact 3rd, you know what I'm talking about. And the characters are really great, like there's some really good characters in here. There's like a big bear, Ben Bigger, who is such a sweetheart. He's a big bear, Mr. Bear. We love Mr. Bear here. And Billy's a great character as well. I think the closest person to compare him to is probably like your Deadpool character. He is very outlandish, he is crazy, and he loves his guns. You've got Nuka Mag, because of course you've got to have a cat girl character in your gacha games, don't you? We got Nicole, who's got a big personality. We've got Grace, who's got an even bigger personality and we have got a character who is not yet released but I am saving up for her Yanagi and she's got a very 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 big personality indeed and of course the first limited character which is Ellen which is a shark girl which is pretty cool I have skipped her though but her story was really good fun. She loves candy, by the way, guys. If you've got some candy, give some candy to Ellen. <laughs> so overall, the cast of characters has been pretty good, and I can't wait to see what ones come down the line later on. But then we have the in-game cutscenes, which, my god, I just want to, you know, just applaud the animation teams for such an incredible job. I have never seen such expressionist... Expressionist? Is that even a word? Um, animations before in a while like the only way I can describe them is like you're kind of early Pixar Disney type of things there is a technique they do use a lot in animation which is called squash and stretch which is just to express your characters even more so you'll notice a lot that characters will like you know they'll their bodies will squash but then they'll over extend as well they'll stretch out just to give it more of an expression which I love by the way and Billy from most of the cutscenes, it's always the most over squashed and scratched character that there is. I would just love if there was more cutscenes like that, but I can imagine cutscenes like that take quite a while to animate, so that's why they are very far and few between. But my god, when you get to watch them, it is a marvel to watch. The only issue with them is now, though, they make Genshin Impact and Honkai Stereo just look stiff as a freaking board. So I don't know if down the line, both Honkai Stereo and Genshin are going to implement that type of animation later on. But it just makes them seem just not as animated now, so it kind of just feels like... Ha. Also, a quick side note bonus for PC players, there is unlimited FPS, so if you've got a really good PC, then thumbs up to you, you can have unlimited FPS on this game. Next, I want to talk about the music, and my god, Hoyo Mix have knocked it out of the park. Like, I think this is some of the most funky music I have heard from their production in a while. Like. Some of the songs are just ridiculous. The boss battle music that there is, even just the domain musics are great. Like even just the town music, it's just nice chill music. I get Persona vibes from it. I also get like Jet Set Radio Future vibes from it as well. Like the music has been like, it's definitely one of the top points of it. The animations and the cutscenes and the music, it's like, they're the top one and two of this game easily by far. And I also want to say the voice actors did an amazing job on this. A rare English voice actor W in this one because some gacha games when it comes to English voice acting has um, some of it can be quite questionable if I can say. Some are really amazing. There's a lot of voice actors out there doing an amazing job but there are times where you're just like, were they even 
told what's actually happening in this scene or what kind of direction they were given but I will say for Zenly Stone Zero the voice acting has been great like there's been some really good funny parts in it that I have you know while I'm playing that I do laugh and giggle as well at the same time while I'm watching them so I will say the voice actors in Zenly Stone Zero have done an amazing job also I want to talk about the character designs as well I know a lot of people have had mixed feelings about them saying they're very bland there's nothing really too much going on with them I gotta say though, I actually do like the character designs. There's a lot of good character designs that, you know, I have enjoyed. And, you know, you get to go as a freaking bear. There's a bloody bear in this game, a Mr. Bear. And who doesn't want to be a bear? You also get to have a kind of relationship value with these characters. I've only kind of dabbled in the relationship stuff so far. The kind of, I know we get hangout events in Genshin and that, but this one is, you've got to as well, similar, just make sure that they like you even more. So you've got to make sure you answer them correctly so they like you, that'll unlock new stuff. I haven't got anybody to max yet, so I don't know what happens if you get them to max. Do you go out on a date with them? Do you get a fun cutscene with them? I don't know, I've still yet to figure that out yet. I've still yet to do all that. So that stuff, yeah, I'm still in the dark about. Oh, and another plus note, guys, you actually finally get to pet a cat in here. Not just a little text box that says, you petted the cat. You actually do have a full blown animation where you stroke that cat. I could have said another word there, but I decided not to. <laughs> you get to stroke your cat and you can just leave it there. You can just leave that cutscene playing of you petting the cat all day long. And that is a huge W right there. Now leveling characters is just like any other gacha game. You need materials to level up. So you've got domains to get your materials, domains to get your abilities materials, and also domains to get your upgrade materials as well. And also a plus as well, there's a freaking skip button. So if you're not really too bothered about the story, you can just skip all the way through it if you want to do that. Now, speaking of the story, I'm not going to talk about spoilers in it. So I'm just going to give you a rough idea of how I felt about the story. I think the best way to describe the story is, is a roller coaster. And not in the way as in you might think. I'm thinking there's some really good highs, but there's also some lows where you're just kind of just drifting through it like I think I think the start of chapter one is really good it kind of you know tapers off a wee bit at the end chapter two it's at the beginning if I recall chapter two it's kind of like uh but then during the second part of chapter two it gets really good and then again near the end it kind of like falls off a wee bit but then chapter three when you finally get to go to the housekeeping bit then it goes back up and I think they've left on a high for 1.0 so I will say the story overall it can be a drag for some, but I think it is worth it to enjoy it and enjoy the characters that you see along the way. And I am excited to see what they do for the story in 1.0. So if it kind of continues the way it's going, from what I've said so far, it's going to go down, but I just hope it still stays up at the start because they've got to keep me invested. That is their one issue of it, but I think they'll do a good job. I think, I hope, fingers crossed, they're going to get it right. Now, I'm going to talk about the cons in this game, and I think if you've played Zenless Zone Zeros, I think you know what the con is going to be it is of course the tv system now i know i know i know i know i know i know they got rid of what was it they said 80 percent of the tv system which if that is true my god if that 80 percent of the tv system was in there i don't think i would have been able to finish this game because it really does halt the progress of the story and at the end of the day they ain't gonna get rid of it because the story is based around the TV system and hacking into the TVs and using the TV system to traverse the hollows. So I am not expecting them to get rid of the TVs. That is one thing I am not expecting them to do at all. The only thing I can suggest is they condense it even less so. Like I know they have it in the explore missions. Maybe just have the explore missions, you just go into the domain. You don't need to do these TV system for the explore. I think it works great for the weeklies, like the simulated universe type of steel, the Telio thing that you've got there. That weekly system, I think it works great in that. I think it is perfect for that. The story, it, I know it's not going to leave the story, but it really brings the story to a grinding halt when you need to do these layers upon layers of this story stuff. and looking for lights in the TV world so you can light them up and then making sure you're not running into enemies because then it'll zoom you all the way back and then making sure you've got to go the right way in the dark so you can get a key. It's I know I know they added a fast forward button and it kind of helps it a wee bit but at the end of the day it is just putting a band-aid over a huge crack right now. And as I said before, I don't think they're 
gonna be changing it anytime soon because the story of the game is the TVs and hacking into the TVs and the TV system. So I don't know if there is anything they are ever going to do about that at all. Unless they make the TV things really, really, really short and they decide to more focus on more cutscenes and animations. That's the only way they can do, but then I, I don't know if they'd be able to work around that. But we'll see. We'll see you down the line. But for me personally, I just think that's the one big con. I think the story can be a bit of a drag sometimes. It does have highs. It does have lows where it's just like, okay, now this is just turning into, you, you know, just a talk fest right now. There's not really any need for this. It's not really, you know advancing the story this part right here but the highs are highs and that's really good as well there isn't too many cons like i said i really do enjoy the battle system you know you get great satisfaction when you hit off them parries and when you can dodge at the right time thank you elden ring for teaching me how to dodge in games but other than that there isn't too many cons i can actually think of like i think the dailies are fine the dailies are pretty quick to get through and the weeklies can be pretty quick as well so I think as well, it's a great game if you just want to play on a daily. It doesn't even take long to do your dailies as well. So for me personally, is it worth downloading? Sure, if you've got time to add a gacha game, a wee fun gacha game to your days, to your daily life, then absolutely give it a download. At the end of the day, it is a free game. I'm free to play. I haven't spent a penny on any of the gacha games that I play, and I have fun with them every day. So... It depends what you're looking for in your gacha games, you know, but I think it is an easy grind. There isn't too much grinding that I've felt yet so far. And the weeklies are fine as well. They can be done pretty quick. Maybe not the TV weekly one. The TV weekly one does take a wee bit because you do have to go through everything. So that one can take a wee while. Maybe it might become quicker in some ways. I don't know how, but maybe it will. And as I said, the other question is, is it fun? Yeah, I've had really good fun playing it. Now, I can't say for everybody, maybe it's just because I stream it, I don't know, when I get to talk with chat and have a bit of a laugh and giggle, I've been having fun with it. I haven't felt like it's been a drag at all. Like, the 1.0 story has been thick. It has been a dummy, a dummy thick indeed. There is a lot a story in it so if you're into stories then this is the game for you and like i said i had a really really fun time in it i had times where i was watching it and just laughing at some of the stuff the character was saying and just really enjoying the animations as well like again i cannot praise these animations enough so at the end of the day is endless zone zeros worth playing i can't tell you what to do but as i said i did have fun with it and that's what we kind of want in games now these days. You just want to shut off your brain and have a bit of fun now these days. But yeah, that's probably about it. I can't really think of anything else to talk about the game unless there's something I have missed and not thought about. I didn't really write out a script for this. This is the first time I've done something like this before. So let me know if there's any kind of improvements I should do. This is very weird for me to do. I've never done a review before, but... I thought I would talk about because I have seen a lot of people bashing the game when they've only played like one or two hours on it and I know the general consensus is people are like oh you need to play like about eight or nine hours before the game gets really good and I do kind of agree if if I need to play a game for eight nine hours before it gets good is that a good game I mean yeah I kind of do agree with that you shouldn't really need to play that but I enjoyed it from the first minute to the last minute I will say even when I was in the low bits I was still having fun playing it. I was still having a laugh, still enjoying it either way. But that is my review of Zenless Zone Zero. Let me know down in the comments below what you thought of Zenless Zone Zero and if there's anything I've missed out on or if there was anything else you wanted me to expand on, let me know. And if you have found this video, do me a favor, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, and until the next time, I will give you all a Zenless Zone Zero Cyber 5. All right, and take care of yourselves and each other. Until next time, peace.